Hi, this is Amy Barnett from Medical Motion, and I'm going to show you how to assess pelvic alignment during running. The, the first step is to take a posture shot of your runner. The reason for this is you want to know that if any excessive or insufficient movement is due to natural posture alignment, or whether it's more of a compensation for other things going on in the body during running. So to assess a standing posture alignment, we're just going to take a look at the pelvis for this purpose. And uh, what you want to do is begin by drawing a line from the ASIS to the PSIS across. So to do that, uh, if you do not have markers, which I would suggest if you have the opportunity to stick markers on those landmarks, uh, you can just follow the line of the shorts and then draw a line across. So you'll see here that she has an angle of about 5 degrees. Optionally, we'd like to see 11 degrees, and that's pretty average in people. So her, po her pelvic posture is actually somewhat tilted back more than we'd like to see. As a result, you'll see that she has somewhat of a flatter type low back. And if anything, it's almost like her tail is tucked underneath her body a little too much. A person who stands in this posture on a regular basis will tend to lose a lot of the tone in their gluteus maximus because it's stuck under the body where it's not being used on a regular basis. So next step is to look at the running gait. What happens as a result of this type of postural uh, alignment? What you'll see is as she pushes off, Her pelvis doesn't tend to rock forward all that much as she pushes off. Now, the average individual will rock their pelvis forward anywhere from about 15 to 20 degrees. And that allows them a little more room to be able to extend their leg behind them. If their pelvis doesn't rock forward as much, they'll tend to be restricted in how much they can lift their leg behind their body. So if I draw a line again from the front to the back of the shorts and across, you'll see now that she's only at 11 degrees, so that's going to lack her ability to extend the leg behind the body. Also what you'll see is when she strikes the ground, her pelvis will almost dip backwards and actually almost posteriorly rotate in this direction. So you'll see that her back again flattens as a result of that. On the other hand, we will sometimes see people who have the opposite issue where you'll see quite a bit of excessive anterior pelvic tilting. So in this case, usually you'll see that and you'll assess that uh, at the point of toe off. So you'll see that right here, this individual, he really tends to curl his low back and his pelvis really dips forward. So he is now at about 25 degrees. Anything over 20 degrees with 2D analysis would be considered extremely excessive. And as a result, you'll see that he has quite an excessive low back curve as that pelvis dips forward. So if you have any questions, please feel free to give me an email at amy at medicalmotion.com.